Let me All just. Right, okay, let me have uh, five minutes with my nephew because I know he has to go. But Stevie, what are your thoughts about the whole thing about um, Spencer and what's going on? I would like your thoughts if it's possible. Please go ahead. Um, I think, like you were saying, I kind of feel like this was inevitable where Xbox was going, but I think we didn't see it coming this quickly. Like we thought maybe, you know, next generation or whatever that eventually they were going to go kind of open it up to other platforms. Right, right, right. Or I think we thought Game Pass would be coming, but we didn't think they would release those titles individually like this on the on other consoles. So, so let's say if hypothetically speaking, if this happens that he does releases everything, Gears of War, Halo, how do you think Xbox, like, like, like how will fans the fandom are going to feel about owning an xbox then so what do you think about that yeah. like i think it really depends on the and the implementation if game pass is exclusive to the xbox and how long the time exclusivity because they're saying in the end of jones can come out a few months after the xbox launch the well game. well they're saying so we'll get it in october and they'll get it in december only a couple of months afterwards whoa yeah i mean i yeah i don't know about that because i thought it was gonna be like six months something nah, like that. nah 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 if, if you look at everything it'll, it'll it's a coming out in like yeah. december in december it's if like, they do it that if they do it that way then it really doesn't give you a sense or a, a reason to get in it, you know what I mean? Correct, correct. Because if I if I only gotta wait two months. <laughs> right. I mean, I just hope that, um, I don't know, um, Phil Spencer will be like yeah. speaking next no, week. No, thank you. W Sorry, dear, what happened? No, that now Phil Spencer will be talking next week, um, early next week, and uh, we'll find out more where is the direction of Xbox is going, you know what yeah. I mean? So mm -hmm. it's 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 actually bittersweet because you know i mean for us that we've been blessed you your brothers everybody we have everything but you know because we've been blessed <laughs> but like most people don't have you know they only have an xbox console that's it and, mm -hmm. wow. and you know they got but that like pride was, Go ahead. but like i was like i was telling saying in the chat yesterday right we bought the xbox with no exclusives we bought it for the power of the system and game pass so this essentially is, that hasn't changed that, that is true it. true that's true because we bought the launch we're literally launch with no exclusives yeah. yeah with no exclusives yeah, yeah. we yeah um so like because halo got delayed <laughs> right well we my, didn't have an exclusive. myself and my nephews my both nephews we've been blessed that you know we bought the launch title um we both we all three of us bought the launch for the PS5 and the Xbox, right? We got it at launch. We have the original launch boxes. And yeah, that's... We got it in the pre-order window. <laughs> in, in in the pre-order window. Not at, even launch, technically. Yeah, we, we got it pre-order. Pre-order. Wait for pre-orders. And, and we've been blessed. And, you know, like, um, we are blessed that we own all three consoles the switch the ps5 and the xbox and a pc we all so we so we're like we're covered but i mean for the people that you know don't have that luxury and they don't have that blessing i feel kind of bad you know because there's a lot of pride you know like when you you know because they go all right you got 500 dollars, right stevie which mm -hmm. one you're going to choose now the only thing that could that the only thing I could see after the fact is, let's say everything everything goes everywhere, right? You got everything goes everywhere. Then it goes like, is it is it fair to like say, is it fair to say that I'm gonna go where my friends are at? So so if most of your friends are in Xbox, so you're gonna buy an Xbox then. But if your yeah. friends have a PS5, that PlayStation Five is saturated the market. So the problem with that is that it just keeps well, pushing PS5. Well, the point is, I you just read my mind. With that said, since mm -hmm. since the PS5 on numbers three to one, most people are gonna have a PS5. Fair enough. That's fair, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's, but it, the system would literally be Game Pass. But if Game Pass comes to the other consoles, it's a, a pickup. How would they... How, so, hypothetically speaking, if they put Game Pass... Let's just say, let's just play Devil's Advocate. Right. Devil's Advocate. If there was a way that they'll put Game Pass on Sony, mm -hmm. how would that work, you, you think? That's a very interesting question. So, uh, correct. I think, right, EA Play ended up coming on PlayStation, even though Sony initially denied it. Correct. And I think right now, if you have the EA Play, you could download their games and play them on PS5, right? I, I believe that's what ended up happening. So I imagine it could be potentially similar. Yeah. Where you have the membership and you play all of the Xbox Studios games. At least at least the internal studios games. I don't know about the third parties, because that might be a little too <clears throat> it would be against Sony's interest to allow that. Mm, um so and there's also now maybe with the Switch 2, is it possible that they'll put that mm. they will actually put um Game Pass on Switch 2. That'll be listen man. But then again, we don't know if that console is going to sell. Like right now, you got over 250 million. How many of the apps are just out there, Stevie? 200 and, what, 210 million right now out there? Million. Stevie? Nintendo Switch. 140 million Nintendo Switch. You have 140 million. Wow. So are you excited for the Switch, Stevie, or what? You excited for the Switch too? Well, see, I mean, so as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing to be that excited about until we know more about it no one knows nothing you know i i, I you know i and i said this everything's speculation the other day i said this too like there's people pre-ordering switch tools like off this website like, like what are people <laughs> doing <laughs> what 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 is it, it you know what are people doing so the switch also right. the biggest question is but like again okay. you people have these um mobile handles like the steam deck and the the Lenovo Rog and all that, right. and they are running Game Pass on those systems. So I could see that it's a possibility that could happen with the Switch too. Wow! If it's in the that same lane. Now let me ask you another question. You imagine you pay a subscription, you get the Microsoft properties, right? You get Bethesda, you get Activision Blizzard games, right? So for one subscription. You could be playing Crash Bandicoot, Call of Duty, etc. included. Plus Halo. Interesting. But now the biggest question is, Stevie, would it be backwards compatible? So it doesn't affect me. Again, I've been blessed and I'm very humbled. I own three three switches. No, four. Because <laughs> I collect them. Just like an idiot. Don't do that, people. Do not collect switches. But I do own four of them. I got the light and then three others do not do that people you know but but like i said i've been blessed but and of course my nephews own two of them right stevie you own the light and you also own the home console one as well right you have the sand the launch model and the um light that's what I mean. right and also my other nephew eli has has the same thing but no, the, he has the OLED and the regular. The OLED and the regular. So, so, yeah. so pretty much that doesn't affect us, you know. But again, yeah. backwards compatibility. Let's see what happens, right? I, I, I mean, it would be thing, nice. In, Go ahead. In Nintendo's history, they almost always have had it. Well, from the handhelds, the handhelds always had it. Correct. All the way to the 3DS, they at least had the generation before. Correct. So the Game Boy Advance had Game Boy, Game Boy Color. The DS had Game Boy Advance. The 3DS had DS, etc. Correct. For the console market, the Wii was backwards compatible, and the Wii U was backwards compatible. Obviously, the Switch couldn't be backwards compatible because there's no disc drive. And a lot of people don't know this: the Wii U is a is a Wii, well, just more powerful. That's why it's hardware compatible, right? The Wii. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand. But the Wii U, if you get the ISO and you put it, uh, and you put it on a you know SD card, your Wii U plays GameCube games. A lot of people don't know that. It's a hundred percent compatibility. Did you know that? 
Oh, I didn't know that you could launch GameCube games on Wii U. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, if you get the ISO, like you burn your CD, right? Put an ISO, right, of uh -huh. the game of, let's say, Mario Kart. It is backwards compatible, 100%. I, I, like, like I have done it. You put, you you put two you, generations back, GameCube to Wii U? Yeah, the Wii U will play natively Wii games, as we know. Wii games, that I know, yeah. But if you get the ISO, if you go online, <laughs> you, you, you like download the real ISO, put it on an SD card, and you put it in the Wii U where the like, SD card, it will play GameCube games. Like nothing. Oh, look at that. Because it's it's the same hardware, it's just more powerful. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. And it's hardware based, not software. It's hardware. Right, like the Xbox is software based. Correct. But on the Wii U, it's native Wii and GameCube hardware based. Meaning guys, that is not using software. It's using the actual hardware, so the games are going to run exactly the way they were intended to run. So it's not, so it's the real deal. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's food, that's food for thought. So they're backwards compatible. So if the Switch. Yeah, and even at the hardware level, in terms of, of accessories, when the Wii launched, it had the GameCube ports um, mm -hmm. for controller and memory cards. And so for Wii U, virtually every Wii F Yeah. So, Stevie, I got a question for you. So, my nephew was big on handhelds. Uh, Stevie, what was your best handheld? I think, let me try to guess. I think it was the PS Vita because of the graphics. <laughs> yes, sir. Believe it or not, the one, it's, it's up there. But for me, I still think I got to give it to the DS because of all the types of software it has. But... Really? Yeah, Be the Vita the Vita is one of my favorites, but the Vita didn't have as vast a library. And the thing I don't like about the Vita is that Sony gave up gave up on it early and it was the third parties that even kept that system relevant. I remember when Stevie he was Stevie, how old you was when you had the Vita? You were fourteen maybe? How no, old? no, that's the PSP time. The Vita what I was the already in college. I was like eighteen, nineteen. Okay, 18 or 19. I remember him showing me. Didn't those PS uh, Vita games were almost console level? Exactly. Like, it, there was yeah. no difference. The graphics were incredible. For, for, right? Remember, I brought it. Remember when I brought it to Florida and I showed you the Uncharted? Oh, yeah. It, it, it was a one for one. I, yeah. And you see, like, the water, the graphics in the water and everything. The quality of the graphics was phenomenal for a, a 540p screen. So. So I own a PSP, and I own that one because they got so many titles, man. The PSP. Yeah, that, I, that, that's why that had a lot more support from Sony and from third de party developers. Now that Vita was abandoned too early. And then, as like everyone knows, for the Vita, fun fact, guys, fun fact here, they made three three different models: the thousand, the two thousand, and the three thousand. Mm -hmm. I own the 1000 because to me, that, that has the OLED screen. The OLED screen, but it was the most rugged. It felt the most premium. Like, like it felt, yeah. I, it got some heft to it. But, but, um, so I have a PSP and I have a Nintendo 3DS. Now, I do love my 3DS because just playing these games within 3D, it changes the experience, Stevie. It really does. You, you know what I mean? So you owned a uh, 3DS as well, didn't you? As a yeah. kid. So I what was? You. So what I was your? Handheld except for the Game Boy Micro. <laughs> what was your favorite game on the like 3DS? Mine is Mario Land. I think because remember Mario Land, Mar uh, Mario Land was built ground up. I I think it uses the best implementation. That game, three. 3D yeah. Mario Land, I think. What was yeah, yours? Was Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7. I, I own Mario Kart. And Kid, and Kid Icarus Uprising. Those are probably my top three. Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, I am going to buy that game. That game that, that game you told me. Um, it's that the one. Kid Icarus. Yes, I am. I love it. 
Yeah. Uh, That's when they have hit, hit the angel. Well, that well that game ain't cheap, but I'm buying it. <laughs> that game's not cheap right now. <laughs> it's <dangerous. laughs> That but game. No, it's a great game. Right. And it's created by by um, Sakurai, the Smash Brothers developers. Okay. They that game. And I love it. All right. So. So as we know, guys, uh, both of my nephews and they they were raised with, with these games, and you know it, it's just a treat that I could actually talk to them about them and um, just ask their opinions. So out of your best handheld was the DS, unbelievable, the DS. Yeah, huh? the so the what was the DS and and, uh, and then the Vita because mm -hmm. I actually didn't have a PSP. Eli had the PSP, so I played a little bit on it, but I didn't have the Sony handheld to the Vita. Yeah, I I've been blessed. I like I own all of them right now. <laughs> They're in the closet, and I own all the games. Like a lot of the major hitters. Yeah. Well, I played Persona 4 Golden. I played Uncharted. I had the Resistance game, which was terrible for the Vita. Right, I right. Had the for the Vita. I I really enjoyed that system, but it just uh -huh. Sony gave up on it too early. Where Nintendo doubled down and saved the 3DS. It never matched the DS. But it at least, you know, still sold like, you know, 80 million units. Jesus Christ, so many units, huh? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. And that, was, and that was a system that was failing, that they had to do an $80 price cut six, what was it, eight months after launch. And Iwata had to apologize for the, the supporters of launch because yeah. they had to cut it by that much. Guys, this is MCO Gamer 27 talking to my nephew. Uh, about gaming because we were raised well he was raised in gaming so um let me tell you something cv so the ps3 the 3ds launched at 249.99 and and That's you know, price for 3DS. and the what you the know was 299 what's so funny that a lot of people don't give nintendo enough credit they were always price friendly like like um the like um nintendo gamecube they launched for 199 that's mm -hmm. that's how much that GameCube costs. Right now, a GameCube costs you one one fifty, two hundred dollars. The thing having gone, but at the time, you you get it. It was still two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. like something affordable. And I think and and then on the Wii guys, they made a Wii. So everyone knows on Nintendo Wii. Fun fact, guys: when you buy a Wii, make sure it has the four ports on the left hand side. That means that it's backwards compatible to a GameCube. It is a GameCube, uh, just a little bit more powerful. So when you, but when you buy just the Wii, the they they the actually lore, the lore they actually made like a lore model that has not the ports. Don't buy that one because even though it's like fifty bucks, but it's not backwards compatible. Meaning because a Wii, it is a, a GameCube. So if you own a Wii that has the four, the easiest way. They got the four ports on the side. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, how you the know. Four ports and the two memory cards. That's how you know that it's backwards compatible. Meaning that, and it's not software. Cause remember, guys, software makes a difference in the games. They don't run the. They don't run the correct way. I mean, they'll you know, they'll like run, but not exactly. But a Wii, because it literally had right like the, the GPU and everything from the original console. Co correct. The Wii is just a, it is a GameCube exactly. So it's so when you put a GameCube disc inside a Wii, it is a, it, you have two systems in one, and I think that was great, right? I mean that that was a great concept. You know what I mean? That's why I said that's usually how Nintendo has worked. And for for the Wii and Wii U, they were both backwards compatible. Obviously, the Switch couldn't do it because it was a different format. But I think that they're going to still make it backwards compatible because I think that's the way Nintendo operates. Well, like the good thing is that they solved the problem about the SD cards. Now you can put four like four terabytes on a, like a card now. So now like mm -hmm. they don't really need to switch the media because that media could hold. 128 gigs 200 gigs it's just the price you get it like so the price to put a game on it so if it, so we like with these larger games what i'm saying is stevie that the media now itself there is no limit understand what i'm saying they could put as much space they want on the card itself now you get it 
Yeah, but what they're doing is they're putting one, one gigabyte on the card and making you download the rest. And I think that's a terrible policy. Because they're doing it to save money because of the because of the like SD card itself. That's right. why. So they're getting the cheapest one. But the problem is what happens in the future when those servers are down and the game isn't even on the on the cartridge. Correct. So you're always gonna get a half ass experience unless it's completely on the cartridge. You know what I mean? That's why you know what I think? And then before I let you go, I have a feeling they're gonna make so you know a uh, Mario Kart. They're gonna make me buy it again. I guarantee you they're gonna make a um, um they're gonna make a um definite CV, what is that word that everything is together? A uh, definite uh, 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 addition. Definitive meaning mm-hmm. meaning at all those courses will be on the cart. I mean, I really hope not. To me, uh, it, it, I mean, cynically, it, they could. But that was the whole point of having Super Mario, I mean, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The whole point. And then they release more DLC, so then it's a possibility. But I think it's time for a new entry. We lasted a whole generation without a new Mario. No, no, but no, but what I'm saying is before the Switch closes, they might oh, throw... They, they might throw one that has... You like you're gonna pay the sixty dollars again, or 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 wait a minute, they might charge sixty nine because they they are because they're including because it costs twenty dollars to get all the courses right. So they may charge mm-hmm. sixty nine ninety nine, but that's the one that's gonna have every course on the card itself. Un- understand? So you don't have to download yeah. them. <laughs> correct. Correct. But anyway, Stevie, thank you for joining me. I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you, and mm-hmm. and, and and I love you very much. And I hope you have a very blessed evening, Stevie. Okay, this is MCO Gamer out. All right, you got it. Bye. You-